Hello class! Welcome to my five minute user interface breakdown assignment walkthrough. Before I set my timer to make sure that I'm keeping to the five minute maximum on this video, I'm going to go ahead and do what you all should do and open up the Canvas page to make sure that I am doing the assignment correctly. So I'm just going to refresh myself with the assignment uh, requirements and then I will set the timer and I will I'll do an example five minute user interface walkthrough. So if, you, if the uh, text on this screen is a little bit hard to read, I apologize. My OBS is set up just so for playing first person shooters on Twitch. So, and I'm, I'm really scared that if I monkey with any of my settings that this is all just gonna be a total dumpster fire. Okay, so, so I will go ahead and read it to you. Um, the five minute user interface breakdown is for you to record yourself walking me through the menu systems or user interface of the game for a maximum of five minutes. You should be talking almost entirely during this five minutes. I wanna see a description and analysis of the game's menu system, health mana bar, state change alerts, and accessibility. So when I say state change alerts, what I'm referencing is how does the player know that they're taking damage? How does the player know that they're out of ammunition? How does the player know that some state has changed to their character or to the character that they're playing or the person if it's a first person shooter or the car if it's a car racing game um, and then with accessibility i'm thinking of things like is there colorblind mode is there the ability to remap your keys okay so uh once i have done all this i'm going to submit this as a youtube link on canvas and there is a cool little rubric on there so make sure that you're doing a fairly deep level of analysis with this game. Okay, now that we cover that, I am going to go ahead and uh, pull up my OBS because I need to turn on the game capture, um, which hopefully worked, maybe. And then um, did the game crash. No, okay, good. <laughs> uh, and then I am going to start my timer and I will begin as soon as I get this back up. Okay, perfect. So, hello and welcome. My name is Ashley Brown and this video is for Professor Ashley Brown's class. I have decided to do a user interface walkthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is a 2004 action role-playing game developed by Troika Games and published by Activision for Microsoft Windows. I've chosen this game because it's a little bit older, and so some of the user interface systems are a little bit dated, but I think it's really interesting for students to see not only an example of an assignment, but also an example of a user interface system that's just a tad older. I'm gonna start by looking at the menu system. This is the menu system that pulls up when you are in the middle of the game. So not when you first start the game, but when you're in the middle of the game. It allows you to continue, reload, load game, save game, uh, look at options, or go back to the main menu. So one of the important things to know is that when I'm hovering over each of my options, there's no possibility I could be confused what I'm clicking on because there's this bloody highlight that's going on. I presume it's meant to be blood because it's a vampire themed game. But the important thing for user interface artists to know is there's this little animation that tells the player that their mouse has hovered over one of these options. First thing I'm gonna do is click on the option submenu. Here we have keyboard, mouse, audio, visual, sorry, audio, video, visual, and gameplay. When I click on keyboard, I notice that I'm allowed to remap my keyboard keys. So within this menu system, I'm able to program my keys, which is quite important if I had a mobility impairment. So if I had tremors in my arms, or if I didn't have the use of one of my arms or hands, this would be really, really vital for me to be able to make sure that I could use the mouse or keyboard vice versa, right? So if my right hand was um, impaired, then I would want to remap mouse buttons to the keyboard, which is great. Here we have a mouse option. For here we have a mouse look. So this allows me to look as my character if I'm in first person view with the mouse. So I'm gonna click that option. I also have a mouse sensitivity slider. So this is kind of interesting as well. Um, this allows me to control the sensitivity of the mouse. So again, if I had some sort of tremors in my hand or some sort of impairment, this would help me be able to successfully play the game. Under our audio settings, um, we have a subtitles option, which I'm gonna turn on. So if I were hearing impaired, this would allow me to be able to read the game instead of relying on listening to it. 
Uh, video settings, we have uh, resolution, which I'm not going to change because that requires the game to restart. Um, but we can see that this is an older game, so we're going to go with the 800 by 600 resolution. Um, and then we have our visual settings. So these are how pretty you want the game to be. I have everything on max because I think my RTX 2080 can handle this game. On gameplay, we have damage floaters. So damage floaters are user interface elements that show damage above a character, shows how much damage you've done. So I'm going to toggle that on. And then we have an option for auto-renewing disciplines and that's more of a gameplay feature. That allows the computer to uh, automatically assign points for me. I'm going to go ahead and click continue and start the game again. That noise you're hearing are the fluorescent lights. That is not some sort of audio error, just to let you know. So here I am in the gameplay world. One of the things that you'll notice is there is a blue bar on the left side of the screen and a red bar on the right side of the screen. Blue typically signifies mana in games and red typically signifies health but not in this game. So since vampires use blood magic in order to power their spells, we actually use red for mana and blue for health, which is a little bit confusing. And this could be because the game was developed in 2004 before we had these kind of color conventions associated with health and magic. But one of the things you'll notice is at the bottom, let's look at the right side of the screen first. So you see the red uh, blood bar or my mana bar. And then you see at the bottom, there's white text that says obfuscate. If I move my mouse wheel, it changes to blood buff or auspex or hysteria or mass hallucination. So these are the different spells I can cast if I push the left mouse button. I don't have any enemies nearby to cast that, so I'm not gonna cast that right yet. I'm gonna move on to the left side of the screen. You see a gun icon at the top. That tells me that I can control which weapon I am carrying. And then the blue is my health bar that would indicate damage, but currently I'm at full health. The last thing I want to talk about, because I'm running out of time in this analysis, is how when I mouse over different objects in the game, there's a little UI element at the bottom of the screen that pops up. So if I'm just looking at a wall, it's not there. If I mouse over to Jack here, uh, I get an interactable option. If I push E, the interact key, I'll be right here. he talks to me. Uh, likewise, I could try to open a door and do other things. So that is my user interface analysis of Vampire the Masquerade. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you have found this tutorial helpful for your assignment. If you have any questions, email me, ask me on Twitch, or ask me in class. I will see you on Monday. Bye!